हाउ आर यू ऑल कैसे हैं आप लोग इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैड मेट एंड वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट पॉलिनोम सो आई होप यू मस्ट बी लर्निंग थिंग्स फ्रॉम देम एंड श्योरली इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट बी वेरी फ्री टू आस्क मी एंड आई बी रियली ग्लैड टू टेल यू ऑल ऑफ देम सो वंस अगेन वी आर हेयर टू डिस्कस टू कीप ऑन द जर्नी गोइंग and uh, to discuss the remaining portions of the polynomials so let's start and see what is there more inside that polynomials okay so we were discussing this polynomials part and in this polynomials what we have seen is introduction we have already seen polynomials in one variable zeros of the polynomial remainder theorem and factor theorem now remainder theorem till here we had seen now today we are going to discuss about this factor theorem okay so what is there in factor theorem so factor theorem in this factor theorem i will be learning about factor theorem and little bit of factorization also factorization of the polynomials also okay now what is this factor theorem basically it's nothing it's just an extended version of this remainder theorem itself you would have remembered that in previous session we studied about this thing that uh, say for example uh, if i am want to divide any polynomial let's suppose say x square minus 5x by 6 plus 6 and if i want to divide it by x minus 1 then if i will divide it then what will be my remainder how do i get that so we used to get the zero of this divisor x minus 1 equals to 0 so then we used to get a value x x equals to 1 and then this value used to be substituted in the dividend and whatever value we used to get that used to be our remainder now say for example if i do the same thing x square minus 5x plus 6 and i divide it by some polynomial say for example x minus 2 and for getting the remainder i'll just do x equal to 2 and i'll put it here now say for example when i put it here and i get the value equal to 0 value equal to 0 now what does it mean it means that the remainder value is 0 isn't it let's see so say for example if i generalize it x minus a if i put a, if i have to divide any polynomial px by any polynomial x minus a then i will be putting this value zero of this polynomial x equals to a x equals to a here so when i put at x equal to a here and we get the value zero this implies we are getting basically remainder equal to zero and you all must be knowing that whenever remainder is zero this implies that x minus a divides px isn't it x minus a is dividing px or in other words we can say that px is divisible by x minus a px is divisible by by x minus a now if px is divisible by x minus a so this is all factor theorem now what is this a difference so in factor theorem we basically try to inquire or try to Uh, a certain this thing that whether a polynomial about which we are talking is a factor of the given polynomial px or not so how do we ascertain that we just simply put the value we just simply put the zero of this polynomial into the dividend wala in the in the dividend part and then if we are getting equal to zero this means that this polynomial px is divisible by this polynomial x minus a because surely the remainder is zero so that is why it will be divisible and earlier we used to get some value so that if we are getting some value this means that remainder is not zero and that is why it is not divisible so this is the simple concept behind the factor theorem let's even try to understand it using some examples also so say for example if we are given here that we have to examine whether x plus 2 is a factor of this big polynomial or not and this also so there are two polynomials you can say that we have two dividends right now so we have to divide this first by this and then by this so i am assuming this as px equals to this polynomial and here i am assuming gx is equal to this polynomial so we have to basically inquire that whether x plus 2 is dividing this or not so for this it is very easy so i can just write it down two take in common x plus 2 isn't it now if someone will ask that whether x plus 2 can divide this or not so i'll say that yes surely it can yeah if you want to see that then you can just write it down at 2 times x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 so both x plus 2 will be cancelled and we will have 2 isn't it so we got this divisible now 
say for example if i have to inquire about this polynomial then are we going to do the same thing for here also are we going to divide it no it will again take very long time as like we had seen in remainder wala part so we are not going to divide it like here so what we are going to we are just going to find out the zero of this polynomial so x plus 2 equals to 0 this employs x is equals to minus 2 so we will put this minus 2 here in this px so let me write it down px is equals to x cube plus 3x square plus 5x plus 6 so i'll just p minus 2 i'll just put x equal to minus 2 here so it will be minus 2 whole cube plus 3 into minus 2 whole square plus 5 into minus 2 and then plus 6 so what we have minus 2 whole cube is minus 8 minus 2 whole square is plus 4 and 4 threes are 12 and this is 5 into minus 2 so 5 into minus 2 is nothing but 10 and this is plus 6 so what we got here 12 plus 6 all the positive terms is plus 18 and minus 8 and minus 10 is negative terms so minus 18 minus 18 plus 18 you must be knowing it is 0 so we got 0 isn't it so the value 0 signifies itself that remainder is 0 and since remainder is 0 so I can write it down that this employs px is divisible by by x plus 2 isn't it and similarly see just now we have seen that this is also being divisible so we can even cross check it that whether it is getting divisible or not so I'll just write it down gx also here gx is 2x plus 4 and I'll put minus 2 g of minus 2 here because I am checking the divisibility by x plus 2 so 2 and in place of x I'll put minus 2 plus 4 so 2 into minus 2 you all must be knowing minus 4 and this is plus 4 and we are getting the value 0 isn't it so we have got 0 here again signifying that remainder is 0 and since remainder is 0 this employs gx is divisible by divisible by x plus 2 and this is how it works so i guess it must be pretty clear to all of you if it is clear let's check out one more type of example and let's move on before that here is the solution also i have done for you guys so you can just take a snapshot if you did not understand it and you can understand later on so remainder is 0 and here in the second case also remainder is 0 so both the cases it is divisible by x plus 2 okay let's move on so here is one more type of question one more question the same type uh, by the way so we have to check whether this is divisible by x minus root 2 or not so if we have to check it by x minus root 2 we will find the 0 of this polynomial so we are getting x equal to root 2 now we will put this value x equal to root 2 here in this polynomial so say for example if i assume this polynomial as fx fx is equal to this so let me write it down f of x is equal to 2 times x raised to power 4 minus 3 x cube minus 3 x square plus 6 x and minus 2 isn't it now say for example if i have to get the value if i have to get the value of uh, this whole polynomial with x equal to root 2 i'll put it here f of root 2 is equal to 2 into in place of x i'll put root 2 whole raised to power 4 minus 3 x cube i'll put root 2 whole cube minus 3 in place of x square i'll put root 2 whole square and plus 6 times root 2 and this is minus 2 okay so now what i got i got root 2 hell, uh, root 2 whole raised to power 4 so root 2 square is 2 and again square is 2 square 4 so 4 2 is 8 minus root 2 cube everyone please pay attention this root 2 cube is 2 root 2 so i'm just writing here 2 root 2 and multiplied by 3 minus root 2 here so root 2 square is 2 so 3 2 is 6 and plus 6 root 2 and minus 2 okay now you would be able to understand that 8 and this is minus 2 8 minus 2 is 6 and here is minus 6 so 6 minus 6 cancelled minus 3 into 2 is minus 6 root 2 and here it is plus 6 root 2 so i guess all of them are being cancelled so we got the final value as 0 now since we are getting 0 this is remainder and since remainder is 0 so this employs i can write down that fx is divisible by by x minus root 2 isn't it so this is how it works and i guess that now it would be pretty more clear to all of you that how this factor theorem is working it's just an extension of remainder theorem isn't it 
now let's try to see some more type of questions uh, now this question is also there but i am not going to solve this it's a kind of homework for all of you guys and you have to check that whether this is being divisible by x minus 3 or not so you will tell me uh, i'll be waiting for your comments in the comment box so you just tell me the solution of this question answer that whether it's divisible or not and uh, you can take a snapshot of this and you can do it later on as your homework moving on yes now this is a second type of question which might be asked in your examination and it is pretty common also that you have to find the value of m for which x plus 1 and x minus 8 are the factors of this now if x plus 1 is a factor this means x plus 1 is dividing this polynomial completely this means if i do x plus 1 equal to 0 this implies i'll get x equal to minus 1 then if I put this x equal to minus 1 here in this polynomial, I should get equal to 0. So This is the concept, factor theorem. So if I will make it equal to 0, I will get the value of m. Now let's see how it works. So I will just put here minus 1 whole square minus m into in place of x minus 1 and this is minus 8. So minus 1 square is 1, minus m into minus 1 is plus m and this is minus 8 equals to 0. So, m my 1 minus 8 is minus 7. So, m minus 7 equals to 0. So, m is equal to nothing but 7. Now, we got m equal to 7, isn't it? Now, m equal to 7 will be the value or should be the value of this for this particular polynomial so that it should be divisible by x plus 1. Now, similarly, we have to find the value of m for x equal to 8 also. So, I guess you must be knowing that we have to put x equal to 8 here in this polynomial and we will get the value. So, for one value m equal to 7, this is correct. And for the second one, I have not made the options. So, I just want you guys to tell me that what will be the value of m, value of m for x equals to 8. Okay, for x equals to 8, what is going to be the value of m for this particular polynomial? So, this is also your homework. Keep on commenting. So, I, I want you guys to just indulge in this whole session as a class that I am teaching you something and there is some homework and you should tell me the answer. And it will be really very much fun. So, I will be waiting for that. Let's move on and see one more question. So, 7 is the correct answer for first one. Now, which of the following fact is the factor of this? Now, which of this is the factor? Now, there are multiple methods. First, you can go on with this that you can find the zero of each of these polynomials say for example x equal to minus 3 here x equal to minus 8 here x equal to 2 and here x equal to 6 and then you can put on individually in all of them but see we have learned one new thing but that does not mean that we are going to apply it everywhere wherever we will be having a little more easier method or a time saving method we will be going with that so i guess it's a quadratic equation and here middle term splitting can work isn't it so if middle term splitting can work in this particular problem then we will be doing that and we will not be going with this lengthy method isn't it so i guess you would be able to understand that this 8 can be broken into 4 into 2 4 into 2 is 8 and 4 and 2 can together make minus 6 also so i can write x square minus 4x minus 2x and this is plus 8 take in common x into x minus 4 from here minus 2 take in common x minus 4 so what we got x minus 4 as common and then x minus 2. So I guess you would be able to understand that which of them is the factor right now. So out of all the options only D is the most appropriate answer which we are getting. So here is the answer. So I guess you would have understood that was all from my side for today. I guess today it would be you must be feeling sir, it's okay not an issue. In the next session, I'll be coming with more interesting things, some more uh, twisted questions. And let me tell you, in the next session, I'll be coming with few factorization problems, few identities problem. And let me tell you, when, when I say identity, don't only correlate it with class 8 identities, ki sir, A plus B whole square. They are there. But on these identities, there are very beautiful questions which are possible. So I'll be just dealing all of those questions. So see you guys in the next session. Till then, bye-bye and take care. It was really a wonderful session with you all guys. Thank you. Bye.